In this video, we are going to be taking a deep dive into the history of the Unreal Engine. The goal of this video is to educate people about the three decade running of one of the most popular rendering softwares available on the market, and how it started as a small project for a game that shaped the future of first person shooters as a whole. Initially developed for PC first person shooters, it has since been used in a variety of genres and games and has been welcomed with open arms by other industries, most notably film and television. Let's take a look at the history of the Unreal Engine and why its presence today as a titan of developing should not go unnoticed. First off, I think it's interesting to note some of the more recent film releases that utilize Unreal Engine in their production. To list a few of these titles, we have Rogue One, A Star Wars Story, War of the Planet of the Apes, Ford vs. Ferrari, Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker, and even The Batman. If you can't tell already, Unreal Engine is not a child's play software that is strictly used to make video games. It is a tool utilized by massive tech and film companies to do everything from create video games, render movies, has grounds in architectural visualization and design, automotive design, and even is used in certain NASA demonstrations when assisting to train astronauts to name a few of its potential utilizations. The scope of this program and its tools is absolutely massive, and today we're going to take a deep look into how this all started and began with a particular individual by the name of Tim Sweeney. Tim Sweeney is the founder of Epic Games. The first generation Unreal Engine was developed by him having created editing tools for his shareware games ZZT and Jill of the Jungle. He began writing the engine in 1995 for the production of a game that would later become the first person shooter we know as Unreal. While doing research for this project, I stumbled across an interesting forum post by a user the name of Dan. He says, and I quote, The original Unreal game had an interesting history where its development was concerned. The original concept for the game was a magic carpet-like environment where you fly through caverns with robots. As mentioned by James Schmalz, I probably just destroyed that name pronunciation, who was the only one working on it at the time. There's a link in the description for some interesting facts about the game and the 1995 alpha version. While this may look archaic by today's standards, you have to understand that the late 90s and early 2000s were an absolutely much different time period, and many of the tools that developers use today had not even been developed yet. So for a game to look as good as this did was groundbreaking. The game was finished and released in May 1998. The game became a massive success virtually overnight and reached sales of 1.5 million units by 2002. The commercial success of this title was phenomenal and would propel Epic Games to continue to work with the Unreal Engine as their main developing platform, and many revisions over the last three decades would be made, each with massive leaps in performance and upgrades as a whole. In October of 1998, IGN reported based on an interview with affiliate Voodoo Extreme that Sweeney was doing research for his next generation engine already. With development starting a year later, the second version made its debut in 2002 with America's Army, a free multiplayer shooter developed by the United States Army as a recruitment device. Soon after, Epic would make Unreal Championship on the Xbox, releasing it to another commercial success, with it being one of the first games to utilize Microsoft's Xbox Live. I do want to take a second to reiterate that the United States military actually used this tool to develop something to help recruit and train their actual army. This is just another point to stress that this tool is not strictly used to make video games. There is massive utilization across multiple industries and by the early to mid 2000s the idea of Unreal Engine becoming a staple was bubbling to say the least. What made Unreal Engine 2 more advanced than the original Unreal Engine released is that it was capable of running levels nearly 100 times more detailed than those found in the original release of Unreal. The engine integrated a variety of new features, including a cinematic editing tool, particle systems, export plugins for 3D Studio Max, and a skeletal animation system first showcased in the PS2 version of Unreal Tournament. In addition, the user interface for Unreal ED was rewritten in C++ using WX Widgets Toolkit, which Sweeney said was the best thing available at the time. Well, that last minute may have sounded absolutely confusing, and trust me, I have no clue what any of that means either. My takeaway from this 
is that it is evident that Epic Games saw a vision with this tool and did absolutely everything they could to bring the best resources on the market forward. They took zero shortcuts on creating one of the most innovative developing tools seen, and it shows. There is a reason why it is, as of the writing of this video, the most popular rendering software by far, and continually has been pushing the envelope. This brings us to where the Unreal Engine truly begins to shine like the diamond it is, Unreal Engine 3. This is Gears of War. Gears of War was released in 2006 and was an absolute titan of a game selling millions of copies and somewhat debuting what the Unreal Engine 3 could really accomplish. Initially debuting on Xbox 360, the franchise is still active today and for what it's worth really shows what the Unreal platform could begin to do. While most of what I have shown so far is just content from video games, I am attempting to give a timeline of the relatively quick advancements in graphics that this engine has procured. In a short span of under 10 years, the Unreal Engine had gone from dark corridors and blocky textures to creating 3D environments at a whim. These advances in computer rendering has done miles for the entertainment industry and is partially why we are able to watch some of our favorite TV shows and movies. Another side note to Unreal is its ability to work and deploy across multiple devices in different operating systems. The platform can deploy to Android and iOS, which is huge for people who use apps on their phones nowadays, which is everyone, and many of the UIs for what we use and see on these applications are created in Unreal Engine. So let's take a moment to recap and summarize what we have gone over so far. The Unreal Engine is a real-time 3D rendering software that started as a small project by Tim Sweeney and in the short span of roughly nine years went from a bare-bones developing toolkit to a powerhouse of a resource, being used by hundreds of studios across the globe and assisting in creating some of the most well-known gaming franchises. It also retains the ability to work on multiple devices, work in different industries, and propelled creative minds alike to work further with this toolkit. The software is essentially free to use, and without going into too much of the business details, provides anyone who wants to create something a free program to use and work with. There is no dollar amount you have to pay for this program. Epic Games allows us to work with and develop through it. This is a huge attraction to the software, as you don't pay a dime up front to use it, and the actual Epic Games store has multitudes of assets for anyone willing to download and use for free for their projects and publications. This brings us to the Unreal Engine 4. Unreal Engine 4 to this day is a monumental achievement in the realm of 3D rendering and software, and practically half the games and countless movies in the last 8 or so years have had some utilization of the program. Initially debuting in 2014, it was re-released with a completely free-to-use model in 2015 and absolutely exploded in popularity with its stardom-titled game, Fortnite. While this video is not necessarily about the success of Fortnite, it is worth noting that this game and genre as a whole have been perfected with the direct usage of the Unreal Engine. The fourth edition of the Unreal Engine added something called blueprints, which are essentially visual representations of code. This makes it extremely convenient for students and masters of coding alike to be able to take one look at a line of code or functions and be able to visually see what is happening on screen in real time. I am no tech genius by any means, but even I was able to look at what blueprints are and understand the fundamental use of them, and with how complicated code can be for us non-code savvy individuals, I can only imagine the importance of this feature when developing. With the Unreal Engine 4, Epic also opened the Unreal Engine Marketplace in September of the same year. This brings us to the current release of Unreal, which is the Unreal Engine 5. Apart from massive leaps forward in computers the last 20 years, powerful graphics cars and generally faster CPU times have allowed developers to really push the envelope with the fifth rendition of Unreal. One of the largest new features it debuted is called Nanite, which in layman's terms allows for a photograph to be imported into the software and immediately turned into a 3D scene in real time. That pretty much sums up the history of Unreal. From the start, I don't believe that the Unreal Engine is the end-all program for the future, but what I do believe is that it is a groundbreaking tool created by some of the most passionate members of the tech community, and over the last 30 or so years has added light years of development into the 3D realm of computers. The best part is it's for free. Tim Sweeney started out with a passion and vision for a first-person shooter and wound up creating one of the most efficient toolkits for a game and film that we know. There isn't much left to say about the Unreal Engine. I think the next few years we will see a vast improvement in films and games that utilize Unreal. So if you liked the video, leave a comment or a thumbs up. I really enjoyed researching this toolkit and would love some feedback or constructive criticisms. Thank you very much for watching the video and I hope to see you on the next one.